All Bladebridge configurations are funded by partners on behalf of end user projects and are not an endorsement by Bladebridge or its team members. Hello and welcome to the presentation of a Bladebridge converter. In today's session, I'll demonstrate how to convert Oracle code to Databricks. For this session, I'll be using one of our converters, which is called SQLConf. If I type in the name of the executable at the command prompt, I'll get short help. The converter expects several arguments. Uh, most important ones are the license key file, either a single input file or a folder with multiple files, the output folder, and the configuration file. As a general rule, all of our converters expect a custom config file to be provided at the command line. The custom configuration file will hold specifications on how to do conversions that are specific to a particular project or a client organization. Our converters are not black box converters. They, the patterns that they generate can be adjusted via config files and externalized code snippets. The code I'll be converting today is a store procedure. It has several elements, a store procedure signature, several variables, a few dynamic uh, SQL statements, uh, DML, loops, concatenations of uh, strings, and then execution of that string in a loop, and the exception handling block. In this session, I'll explain how the converter operates and how it determines what patterns to use on the output depending on what the input is. My full command looks like this. The executable file, the license key file, the folder into which we want to generate the code, the config file, and the input file. My output folder is currently empty. When I run the converter, this folder will be populated. I'm going to go ahead and run the converter. So I'm just running the bat file. It takes just a few seconds to execute the converter. And this is the generated script. I'm going to plug it into the editor. And I'll put the original code and the converted code side by side for comparison. The code that the converter generates for Oracle is typically Python wrapped around uh, embedded SQL. So what the converter did was it converted the arguments to the function into widgets. It took care of the variable declarations. And once the converter encounters the body of the procedure, it starts converting one statement at a time. For example, it took this statement, a DML statement, and it converted it into Databricks equivalent statement wrapped into a Spark SQL call. One of the things that the converter will do, it will adjust the statement to make it Databricks compatible. For example, the, the sysdate call got converted to current timestamp. The function trunk got converted to date trunk. But not only the function call got changed, also the signature of the call um, got adjusted. The first argument became a static string, and the second argument became a current timestamp instead of sysdate. Then the converter encountered the loops. So there's a while loop here, and the converter converted that into a Python loop, executing all the internal statements inside the loop. It also handled the four in loop right here. Now, some of the things that the converter will do is uh, it will take into account some of the best practices of Databricks, and it will and it will generate a string fix me, explaining the reason for plugging this in into the code. And one of the things that it's suggesting is if needed to change the number of max record limit for the loop. Now, the converter also took care of the conditional statements, taking into account Python's indentation requirements. 
and at the end the converter generated the exception block. It also plugged in variables and surrounded them by curly braces. Now, how does the converter operate? One of the inputs to the converter is the configuration file, which is right here. The configuration file supports inheritance model, so I can create a new file and inherit it from our base file and provide overriding instructions in my inherited file. But looking at this base file, there are quite a few sections in this file. Some of the sections deal with statement categorizations. The converter needs to know what type of statement it's processing in order to correctly assign a handler to process particular statement type. These are all the handlers that are sitting internally in the converter. These are some of the templates that the converter uses for producing the target code. Converter also externalizes instructions on how to apply line substitutions, block substitutions, or function substitutions. Depending on the instructions, the converter will use different facilities to adjust the target code. Those could be either regex-based patterns or could be external handlers that will do something more complicated with the processing of the code, such as loop processing or cursor processing or exception logic processing. One of the mechanisms the converter uses is, um, is a templating mechanism. So if I open up one of the templates that the converter uses, in here we can specify how exactly the code will be generated for each type of command. So for example, our parameters are going to get initialized using this convention, or widgets will be declared using this convention. And depending on the scenario, the converter will pick and choose among the patterns that are available in this code. The code that the converter generates is also importable into Databricks Notebook. So I can go into a Databricks Notebook and open up this code. Just need to import the file. And I can view the code in the notebook, which makes it easier. Now, the converter also supports another code generation mode. Instead of generating a script, the converter can generate a Python function for Databricks. So all I need to do is just go into my configuration file and change this instruction, change procedure to function to 1. This is a Boolean indicator. And if I rerun the converter now, the converter will produce a Python function that that has the same logic as the previous script, but the function will have the signature of the original Oracle store procedure, and the body of the function will be the same. This concludes the presentation of the conversion from Oracle to Databricks. Thank you for listening in.